Demons were tragic creatures, their existence riddled with death, fear and hunger. This meant for most demons keeping under the radar was the easiest way to survive. And what were you doing? The choice to transform you had been random, and Muzan did not expect you to survive. Left you for dead. But you didn't. Starved and frenzied, you rampaged through the bamboo forest your village was nestled into. It was sheer will and disgust that kept you from falling to the dark desires of human flesh. Yet you could not resist the urge for bloodshed. The feeling of blood running down your arms was... Unbelievably satisfying. When a demon was reaching a point of starvation where not even other members of their kind could recognize them, they became astray. Wild creatures cursed with an eternal hunger. If this state remained for a prolonged period, the demon either expired or mutated to accommodate their environment. So through sheer force of will and an almost complete extinction of the local wildlife, you had managed to unwillingly become one of these strays. Your bloodied path and avoidance of any human interaction led you to travel, staying away from human settlements and stuffing your face with any animal meat you could gather. It filled your stomach but your body kept begging and begging for human nutrients. However, despite you taking a cautious approach to your existence, the local farmers in the area could not help but hear your desperate cries of pain, dubbing you a banshee. It was around this time the Demon Slayer Corps became aware of your movements. While you haven't killed a person to them, you simply haven't killed yet. And even though you didn't know it, this was the best thing that could have happened to you. The mission to hunt you down had been given to Tanjiro Kamado. The man arrived at the local village that had reported the incident, investigating any rumors and potential disappearances, and he was surprised that there weren't any missing person cases. Not even children had randomly run away from home. At night he was lying awake at the local inn, wishing Zenitsu was here. The blonde slayer could hear the demon no matter where it was hiding. Sniffing didn't work properly as the smell of dead animals was not only overpowering, but also seemingly everywhere. He sighed and looked over at Nezuko. The demon girl was staring blankly through the open window at the moon. Can you sniff them out, Nezuko? The girl looked at him, blinked, and returned her attention to the moon. Tanjiro sighed. He hated this place. The smell of the demon's deeds was everywhere. He was just glad the people in this village didn't rely on hunting animals or were aware of what he was smelling. The Slayer sighed one more time and got on his feet. Despite having no leads, moping in the dark would not get him any closer. He gently pat his demonic sister on the head. Let's go, Nezuko. I have an idea. Minutes later, Tanjiro was quickly running circles through the thicket with his sister's box on his back. Despite the traveling nature of this demon, they must be smelling his sister. Mentally apologized to her for using her as bait. And then, suddenly, the smell of blood, salvia and vomit attacked his nostrils. It was intense and came from somewhere atop the trees. Instantly, he pulled out his katana and looked up. Red glowing eyes looked down at him from a tree. 
the pale moonlight revealing a skeletal and stark visage of a woman with long and wild hair covering most of her face. A white dirt and blood-covered kimono hung loosely from her body. Your eyes were focused on the swordman before you. You had never seen a boy with such eyes before. But seeing him alone, like a meal on a platter, you couldn't help but envision the blood pumping through his veins. Meat. 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 Your only thought. His smell was so intoxicating, you only had eyes for him. Your heart pumped loud enough for him to hear it. A flood of salvia pouring through the tiny gaps of your clenched teeth. You barked at him to run away from you before you let yourself fall out of the tree. Your face was covered in fresh blood of a boar you had killed minutes before. The swordsman gasped at the image of your inflated meat-filled belly. You crawled forward, gurgling, growling like a yure. bloody tears wallowing in your eyes. A branch cracked under your thin, clawed hand. And then you lunged forward. And for a split second, Tanjiro saw the opening threat. Water breathing, fifth form. The blade swung and missed. What? He shouted as his katana burrowed into the dirt. But I saw it. This doesn't make sense. He looked behind himself. You weren't jumping at him. You were jumping over him. Your mouth was hung open. Your neck cracking. Your black tongue licking at the blood around your mouth. Stray demon heart. You hushed. And she called. You unleash an ear-piercing scream that made Tanjiro go on his knees. His entire body is shaking painfully, ears ringing. In his pain state, he closed his eyes. The only indication of your approach was the worsening smell. He opened his eyes again upon feeling something wet and cold moving over his cheek. You were licking him, tasting him, your salvia leaving behind a black streak. You didn't dare to move. And then you pushed your head down into his chest, whimpering, crying, begging. Through your wild and hard-to-understand blabberings, a sentence formed itself. Feedly. He gulped and looked at your bloated stomach and almost looked like you were pregnant. Noticing his change in demeanor, you looked up at him. Your eyes met and he blushed. Despite the grotesqueness of your face, the bloody tears and the red glow in your eyes, he could tell that you haven't lost your humanity. You really, truly haven't killed a single human. At least, not yet. Fear and anxiety overcame him. Right now he saw you as what could have happened to Nezuko. He was grateful she was spared at least your fate. You gurgled and jumped away from him. Hey, what's wrong? He asked trying to sound calming rather than agitated. Your body convulsed, 
and you let out another scream before a hot, slimy mass painfully made its way up your gullet. It was steaming hot and burned your throat as you regurgitated the bloody, raw flesh inside your stomach. Tanjiro quickly squeezed his nose shut to not pass out from the rotten smell. You stared at the remains in something akin to horror. Slowly, Tanjiro approached you from behind. Your body twitched like a startled cat when he placed his hand on your shoulder. You looked at him hungrily. He smiled painfully, his nose still clenched. Oh, I don't be fine. A river or something. Get you cleaned up, I mean. And then we talk this out. It took your effort to not instantly jump at him again and chew off the skin of his face. You did as he said and led him to a small lake, far away from the gruesome smells of the forest. You stared at your own reflection as Tanjiro stretched behind you. Uh, you know, I actually travel with a friendly demon, he said. You ignored him opting to growl at the woman staring at you. Being so busy, you didn't notice him stepping next to you and setting the box on his back on the ground. An idea came to him. Gently, he knocked your behind, throwing you into the cold water. Instantly, you sunk. No bubbles emerged, and he got worried. Did he just kill you by accident? He was about to take a step back when two long, white arms shot out of the quiet water. He yelped as he was dragged into the unknown depths below with you. His head was underwater for only a split second before emerging. He spit out the swallowed liquid and took a deep breath. Tanju looked around himself and gulped. The slayer was in the middle of the lake. Faintly, he could make out your skeletal form swimming circles around him. Without as much as a single bubble, your head broke through the water. Your eyes met, and he blushed. The weight of his clothes laid heavy on him. But he remained as stationary as possible to not startle or cause a violent reaction. You swam closer to him, once again babbling, and again he could make out your words. Feed me. Feed me. Tanjiro sighed and pulled back the sleeve on his left arm, offering it to you. Your eyes widened and you latch yourself onto it like a leech your sharp fangs scraping his skin painfully, making him groan. The noise of iron scraping his wet skin filled his head like the smell of death and decay earlier. And finally you tore through the skin. He huffed in pain as the cold water met with his blood. Your jaw opened wide like a snake and bit around his arm. It hurt. He could feel your tongue wrap itself against the wound, prodding, licking, suckling. You groaned. The hot blood made its way down your throat into your now empty stomach. It tasted unlike anything you ever ate before. Sweet, yet spicy, gentle, and painful. It was as if you were tasting the most expensive, most exquisite wine, or sake. You whimpered at the taste, so focused on taking in as much blood as possible without tearing the slayer's arm off and eating it somewhere safe, that you didn't notice him slowly paddling back to the shore. 
With a faint smile, he watched you suckle like a child while sitting down on the muddy shallows. Suddenly, your bite got harder and the sucking more intense. He was beginning to feel faint. And then, the sucking noise stopped entirely. He looked at your face, no longer a pleased and hungry grin. Now, it was more a face of utter devastation. You let go of him and crawled a few inches away, breaking out into sobs at what you had just done. You had done such great care of not falling into your desires. It felt all wasted now. He pressed his right hand on the wound, huffing as he did, and watched your reaction. It's okay, he said. Right now he just wanted to avoid you fleeing. I understand, he said. A throbbing pain rushed through him from his arm, and he grunted. Your bibbles and babbles sounded like a repeated plea. Somehow sounding like you were begging quietly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Over and over. Hey. Listen, he said. But you didn't, as your begging turned to wailing. Listen, he said louder. You looked up from your long, bony hands. I know someone who can help you. Her name is Miss Tamayo. You tilted your head. Look, my, my name is Tanjiro Kamado, and my sister was turned into a demon. He paused, trying to make out your expression. Your mind was racing and barely able to process human speech, too broken by your hunger. Ever since then, I have been trying to find a cure. He blinked and forced a crooked smile. P please I, I want to help you. You took a few steps forward on all fours. Yes help you. When you reached his feet, you looked up at his face. For a moment, everything was silent. He bit his own lip. Then, you lunged up at him. Tandrio fell backwards as you pinned him to the ground. Your face is so close, your nose is almost touched. He huffed. The fall had hurt. Your skinny body was so light, yet so much strength was now put on his wrists. Your body was heaving, blasting hot, stinky air into his face. And your tongue latched out of your mouth, tickling over his chin. What are you do? You interrupted him by lowering your head quickly, plunging your tongue into his mouth. His eyes widened in shock. He could feel the disgusting metallic taste of his blood as your tongue made its way down into his throat. Your lips touched, and cautiously, his own tongue slid against yours, and you purred like a large cat. Your hands now wrapping around his head. He choked on your tongue and closed his eyes. Total concentration, breathing, he thought in desperation to prevent his body from rejecting your intrusion. Suddenly, your tongue retreated and he huffed in relief, only to then squeak when your long organ tightly wrapped around his, jerking up and down slowly, needily. He curled his toes, unable to contain a pleasured moan. Tanjiro had never felt something like this before. And this was a detail he'd definitely keep from the likes of Zenitsu and Inosuke. A muffled sound could be heard coming from your right, and the slayer slightly tilted his head. There stood Nezuko. 
having left her box a few minutes after he had set her down. She looked at him in confusion. Panic filled the boy's mind, and he attempted to push you off of him, only for you to respond by wrapping your long, thin arms around him tightly, deepening the kiss further. He rolled his eyes. Using his legs, he finally managed to lift you off of him. You are now lying on top of his feet, helplessly flailing in the air. It's not what it looks like, Nezuko. His sister tilted her head. It looked exactly like what she was thinking. And she blinked. Hey, what are you thinking, Nezuko? You rolled off his feet and landed on the ground with a small thud. And got on all fours, staring daggers at the demon intruding on your cuddle time. No, 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 calm down. Th th that's my sister. He said, feeling your murderous intent. You looked at the slayer, then back at the girl, then back at the slayer. See? He pointed at Nezuko and then at his face. Sister. You blinked, your brain processing his words slowly. Then he knelt down next to you. Hey, this may hurt, he warned, and stuck a needle into your arm. Your eye twitched. After it filled itself with a sample of your blood, he pulled it out. Three, two... One. He counted down. Then you heard a meowing next to you. What was happening? Hey there. I know this isn't one of the twelve Kisuki, but could you help this demon find Miss Tamayo? Tanjiro spoke softly to a cat that had suddenly appeared. It tilted its head and looked at you. A growling in your stomach, however, made itself known. Look said Tanjiro to you as he placed one warm and soft hand under your chin. Follow this cat to Miss Tamayo. And don't eat it. Please. And soon you will be healed, okay? Here. He quickly took off one of his earrings and gave it to you. Show it to the demon the cat leads you to. As a sign that I'm the one who sent you. Okay? You nodded. The cat meowed in affirmation and began to quickly run north. Sharing one last glance with the slayer, you looked back at him, before chasing after the feline. Sighing, Tanjiro got on his feet, still wet from the cold water, and a little dizzy from the blood loss. He sighed. So that's how my blood tastes like. <laughs>